everybody. I wanted to make uh, a video for for this because this marks not literally today, but a few days ago marks the first year anniversary of since I migrated from Scotland to America, and I guess I just wanted to talk about it because. I've been rather silent about the whole thing in regards to like talking about it on YouTube and stuff. Uh, the reason for that is obviously when you're migrating there's a lot of paperwork to do, there's a lot of security and stuff involved in that whole process and I felt that I needed to 100% focus on that and not make it too public. Uh, so what I wanted to do now that a year has passed is just talk about how I feel after being here for a year. So a little bit of a backstory, the reason why I immigrated is because I married my husband in April and I immigrated over in December uh, in 2021. And all of this was supposed to happen in 2020, but obviously COVID happened and other things happened in my life that meant that we had to postpone our wedding plans three times. And so we decided to just get married at the magistrates instead and we will celebrate it properly at a wedding ceremony in Scotland in 2024. So it's been very stressful and very upsetting on having to move things around so much. But in the long run, it's it's been worth it and it's it's actually showed me I have a lot more patience than I initially thought. And I've learned a lot about myself and going through all of that in amongst settling into a new country and adjusting to life away from family and friends back home and stuff. It's been, it's been hard, but I know it's going to be worth it and things will get better. It's, it's, uh, it's been a very emotional time, difficult time. Uh, me and my husband are still trying to find a place to live right now. So that's a thing. And hopefully all of this will be sorted out in the coming year. And so I wanted to talk a bit about um, the whole thing, that, what happened when I flew over. And the story is kind of kind of funny because, well, it's not really funny, but okay, so when I flew over uh, last December, I think it was the 12th of December, around that, this was all of the restrictions, like travel restrictions after COVID happened were still in place. And so you had to get your COVID tests done and all of this kind of stuff to prove that you were vaccinated and safe for travel. So I had to fly from Inverness in Scotland to London and then stay over in London and then fly from London to, to America and so I was having two flights and it was spread out. So I was having a, I had a hotel room booked for, for when I stayed in London. So that, that was fine. But while I was traveling from Scotland to London, the rules in regarding international travel from England changed, which meant that not only did you have to have proof that you were vaccinated, you also needed to get an actual COVID test and for it to be negative before they would allow you to travel. Now, because I was travelling from Scotland, I thought that a COVID test from Scotland would be okay for me to travel internationally. And I found out the hard way when I got to check in that that wasn't the case. My COVID test from Scotland was too old. It was a whole day too old, so I had to get a new one. So I had to leave the terminal, go outside and join the queue for booking a COVID test. To book your COVID test at the airport, you have to use an app on your phone. And unfortunately, the app on the phone would not work. So I was standing there for half an hour trying to get this thing to work before I could even join the queue. Then I joined the queue and the appointment 
was 10 minutes later than it was supposed to be. And then you had to wait half an hour for the results to come through. So then I finally got the results that said I was negative and I would join the queue to check in again and I missed my check-in by seven minutes. So that was stressful. This is the flight from London to America I missed. So what they, what they did was they rebooked me on another flight which meant I would have to get another flight from basically I was landing in Philadelphia and then hopping on another plane to get to the state where I'm living now. So, <laughs> so anyway, I get on the flight and the flight is seven hours, which is the same, it would have been the same if it was a direct flight to the state I'm living in, but I had to get a seven hour flight to Philadelphia and then it would be another flight for about two hours maybe for the other flight, an hour and a half, I don't know, it doesn't matter. So I do that, I get on the flight, seven hours, arrive in America and you go through immigration when you're traveling internationally. So basically what that means is you're in a queue before you get your luggage, you're in a queue and you have to speak to the immigration officer and tell them why you're here, why you're traveling, how long you're going to stay, etc, etc. And because I was so stressed out and tired and jet lagged, in my brain, I was like, okay, you need to tell them you were staying here for three months and, you know, say say you're staying here for three months, so from December till March, and remember your date for flying back home, which was March the 9th. And for some reason, when I spoke to the immigration officer, when he said, how long are you staying here? For some reason, I said two months. And... That was wrong, obviously, because they're looking at your information. They know when you're traveling back home. So if you get anything wrong, they will, you know, they'll go through a procedure to make sure that you're not trying to do anything wrong. So um, because I screwed up, they were like, right, we need to interview you because there's some inaccuracies here compared to your travel papers and what you're telling me. So they take my phone from me and take me to an in to in interview area. And I'm really worried that, okay, there's no way that they will send me back home, but I may miss my connecting flight and it's already eight o'clock in the evening. And if I don't get another flight today, I'm gonna to have to stay again at a hotel room and then not get to where I need to be for another day and I'd already been traveling for like two days straight. So I was really worried. But anyway, the interview was simple. I just explained, hey, I said two months, but I'm actually staying for three. The reason why I'm staying for three months is because I haven't seen my fiance or husband, you know, he's my husband now, but at the time, my fiance for over a year because of COVID. So we wanted to spend as much time together as possible. That's why I'm staying for three months. And he was like, oh, okay, okay, that, that's fine. And, you know, they went through all the stuff asking what you do and where, where you're staying, who you're staying with and what they do for a living and how much money you have while you stay and all that kind of stuff. And I knew all of that stuff was going to be asked because, you know, you do your research when you're immigrating and stuff. So I did all that. And long story short, I arrived where I needed to be an entire day later and I'm like short of a flight being delayed or cancelled or whatever, everything that could have gone wrong when I travelled over went wrong. I think the worst part of it was the COVID test thing because the COVID test was only a, a, a day old and the reason why that wasn't valid anymore was because England changed their, their rules for international travelling and I figured that well I'm technically traveling from Scotland and it's within the UK so you would think that the rules would apply to every country in the UK no that's not the case at all so thanks Boris you're awesome <laughs> oh my gosh so that's <sighs> it was a nightmare it really really genuinely was and 
there's a whole bunch of other stories that I would love to tell when it comes to my travels and immigration and all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to tell that story because it's not necessarily funny, but it could be... It's it's interesting for to talk about and I guess if anyone is in the same situation that they're wanting to immigrate and all that, watching a video like this will make them think, oh, there's a lot more to it than I realised and okay, you might not have the whole COVID restrictions to deal with now, but oh, it, ah, it, it, was a, it was a nightmare. But I'm here now, so and I've been here a year, so it's it's going okay. Things could be a bit better in the living situation, but that will improve as time goes on and we get other things sorted out. So I wish I could go into more detail, but there's just stuff that I need to keep private. So, but at least telling that story gets it off my chest a bit. So if you guys want to hear more of these kind of stories, let me know in the comments below. So thanks for listening. I'm Mad Munchkin. Stay creative and travel safe. <laughs> okay, bye.